Okay, well, I'll start talking about how we define food insecurity. In the United States, is there's 18 questions that are used to define whether or not a household is food insecure, okay? And then when it comes up here, I will show you examples of some of those questions. They range from everything from were you worried about whether or not your food would run out, all the way up to the most severe in households with children of did, any, did a child in the household go without food for a full day? Okay, so we have 18 questions that are used to define food insecurity in the United States. Now, out of those 18 questions then, is that we have three questions, if, if you respond appropriately to three or more questions, then a household is defined as food insecure. Okay, my second slide on food insecurity then is going to be talking about the following is we're gonna be just, just showing what happens in the United States in food insecurity since 2000, okay? So we're gonna look at it from the year 2000 all the way up through the year 2015. Three things I wanna note about that figure. When it, the first thing about that figure is that even the 2000 or 2007 were really good economic times in the United States. Even during good economic times in the United States, approximately 30 million Americans were food insecure. So even if the economy improves, we still have to be worried about this in a profound, profound way. The second thing I'm gonna point out about this is from 2007 to 2008, there was a huge increase in food insecurity in the United States. Food insecurity rates increased by 30% from 2007 to 2008. And in fact, to some extent, this really was a leading indicator. Food insecurity rates went up before other indicators of well-being went up. Okay, the, the, third, thing, the third thing I'm gonna point out about this is that food insecurity rates remained high from 2008 through 2014, okay? The recession ended in 2000, roughly 2009, despite the fact that it ran in 2009. And then what happened then is, uh, is the rates remained high. In other words, is this, despite the fact that presumably the economy was doing better, the negative effects of food insecurity lingered for five more years. It wasn't until 2015 that rates finally fell, albeit they're still higher than they were in 2007. So here's the food insecurity rates by year. This is for all households and for households with children. Okay, the next slide. This is, Feed in America is a wonderful, wonderful organization for those of you who have known about. the umbrella organization for all food banks in the United States. And they have something called Map the Meal Gap, which gives us county level estimates of food insecurity in the United States for all counties, okay? So what do we see on this map? This is the map of the United States. And what it shows us is, for example, across Appalachia, you have really high rates of food insecurity. Across the Mississippi Delta, you have high rates of food insecurity. In the upper Midwest, you have relatively low rates of food insecurity, with the exception of, if you will note, is that in North Dakota and South Dakota, you have these pockets of really high rates of food insecurity. Those are Indian, American Indian reservations, okay? So that gives you some sense about what is going on, a continuing issue, and I'm gonna turn back to this later. These are the overall food insecurity rates by county. The next slide then gives a child food insecurity rates. What you'll see here is that Food insecurity rates amongst households with children are substantially higher than they are amongst households, just overall households. And one thing you'll notice is like, like in, this, in the bottom part of that, with, uh, like, around the Rio Bravo, is that you have some, some of those counties there have food insecurity rates of, of over 40%. For example, Zavala County, which is right down there, is, has, has over 40%. So this gives you another sense about really the dimensions of the problems of food insecurity in the United States. Okay, now, some of us may say, look, it's, it's a tragedy that children are going to bed hungry. It's sad that seniors don't know where their next meal is coming from. And in my opinion, that's enough to be care about food insecurity. However, some people are like, I'd hate it when people say this, like, hunger is a great motivator. I'm like, oh yeah, well, you're not hungry. Anyway, so but at any rate, is what I want to point out, though, is that there's some serious health consequences associated with food insecurity. It's a very vibrant literature which has showed this. And if any of you are interested, one of, my, my whole career has been built on working with people much better than I am. And Jim Ziliak is one of the people that I worked with. And we have a paper came out in Health Affairs in which we reviewed this literature. Okay, now, so we may care about it because there's negative health outcomes associated with this. The other thing is, is this is a, the final thing on here is another person I work with, Val Tarasek at University of Toronto. It's great. We did an analysis about what happened to healthcare costs due to food insecurity, okay? Amongst those in the most severe category, they have food insecurity rates that are 121% higher than fully food secure households. That's a huge, I, I'm telling you, that's a big number 
okay? And we should be concerned about it. People are always talking about obesity and the health care costs. Fine, keep talking about that. That's fine. But we need to be talking a lot more about food insecurity and the health care costs associated with food insecurity and the health consequences associated with, with food insecurity. Okay, now what I want to do is, is I want to turn to... So, I, I had an interview done the other day. It was in the uh, Washington Post uh, about uh, SNAP. And one of the, it was a really interesting interview, and some of the comments from people down below were quite interesting. But one of the things I said on this is that, though I was misquoted to some extent, I think they said most government programs don't work. I didn't say that. Some government programs don't work, okay? SNAP, though, is the most effective government program. In fact, I dare you to name me a more effective program than SNAP, okay? So I first want to turn to why it's so amazing. First of all, the primary goal of SNAP is to alleviate hunger. We shouldn't forget this. As people are saying, oh, you should, SNAP should do this. SNAP should support, I don't know, locally grown food. I don't know whatever, whatever people say. Anyway, but the primary goal of SNAP is to alleviate hunger. Anything that we do to change SNAP that impedes its ability to alleviate hunger, we need to take note of that. Okay, why is this program so great? In part, we're a generous country. I mean, people always say, I go to Europe and everybody's like, oh, I was just in England last, you know, when I got back Tuesday. And people are like, oh, you know, the Americans, they don't, they don't do enough for people. I, I, I beg to differ. We have a program, SNAP, where the maximum benefit level of family four is 700, almost $700. We're giving a non-trivial amount of Americans money in order to afford enough food. Not only are we giving people a non-trivial amount of money, is we are also, serving millions of Americans. Tur currently is about 45 million persons are receiving SNAP. The total cost of this is, I think it's now 72 billion. I don't change the slides too often, but I think it's 80, it's something like, anyway, it's a big number, okay? And in fact, if we want to talk about the USDA, USDA really is a US Department of Food Assistance Programs. I mean, about 80% of the USDA's budget is through food assistance programs. The vast majority of these is which is through the most effective of the food assistance programs, namely SNAP. And why? SNAP recipients are 20% less likely than eligible non-recipients to be food insecure. How many other government programs can you say it sets out to do something, alleviate food insecurity? Boom, it does it to that extent. Any discussion that we have about food insecurity in terms of research and other things really does have to begin and end with SNAP, okay? How much more time? Okay, I right, good? Two, okay. Then I'm gonna put all these new research, does that include, okay, all these new research questions, and I'm not gonna have time to talk about all of them, but a couple things I do wanna point out is first, is that most of the best work done on food insecurity has been done by agricultural economists and economists, okay? We've been at the forefront of this literature. Fine, other groups present stuff, and some of it's okay, eh, most of it's not, but some of it's really good. So in other words, is we are at the forefront of this, and we've done a great job at moving this. Interdisciplinary work, I work with other people besides economists, like Val Terrace, actually, she's a nutritionist. They're good people in those areas, but in the main is we've been at the forefront of this literature, and I think we will continue to be at the forefront of of this literature. So these are some of the questions that we're, that we're posing within this. And one other thing about this is you should also know what's not up there. It's not asking about how farmers markets can help out to address food insecurity, or it's not addressing how locally grown food would be so great for poor people, or it's not addressing lots of other things. But you go to these presentations and people are like, oh, well, you know, maybe people should grow their own food. <laughs> that worked well. Okay, so anyway, so the thing is, is that these are some of the questions. So for example, up here is, why are the food insecurity rates of American Indians so high? Okay, it's really a continuing tragedy how high, just give me a thing whenever I'm done, I'm gonna stop immediately, is how high the food security rates are amongst American Indians. And what can we do to, to alleviate that? Okay, another, time's up. Did you say, oh, no, no, this is done. Thank you. <laughs>